what's up guys <laughs> i don't know what that that was ignore that cringe right there um welcome back um welcome if you have not been here before so today we're going to discuss a fairly simple topic but there are just certain things I feel like people don't consider when they're trying to go bioactive and so today we're going to cover my top five or maybe just five in general <laughs> uh, roadblocks that you might encounter when you're trying to go bioactive or at least I want to point these things out to you so that you're aware of them uh, before you even decide to go bioactive or if you've already went bioactive, just some things that you should consider. So um, I hope you stick around and let's get into this video. The first thing that I want to mention when you're going bioactive, the first roadblock is choosing the right plant because there are obviously a plethora of plants that you can choose from when it comes to how you're going to stock your enclosures but also the type of animal that you're trying to um, please or accommodate is also going to determine your plant types but just some things that I want you to keep in mind and if, I, if I keep looking down it's because your girl is prepared and I got my notes. So the things you want to consider is first of all how much light your plant needs because if you are if your enclosure is in like a dark corner and you're not really going to have a lot of supplemental lighting you need to consider that when you're choosing whether or not you need a low light medium light or a high light plant um, i typically just like to go for low light plants because even though my enclosures are next to a window the way it's kind of set up they might not get as much light as they require should they be a high light requirement plant <laughs> um, so consider how much light your plant may need and then you want to know kind of how hardy the plant is. So one of the things that I've noticed with my plants, especially with my ball python, she likes to trample them. And so you don't need a little delicate plant that's going to get easily trampled and easily devastated by the weight of your animal being on top of it or, you know, whatever the case may be, knocking it over, things like that. So you want a hardy plant in the sense that it needs to be able to take a beating from your pet um, but also you want a hardy plant in the sense that it needs to be adaptable um, to different conditions because think about it um, if you're stalking for a snake for example you might increase the humidity when your snake is in shed but then your normal humidity might not be that high uh, depending on what type of snake you have and so you want a plant that can do well in both conditions and I know it's a lot to consider and we don't necessarily at least I haven't necessarily necessarily considered all these things every time that I got a plant but I just want to point these things out to you as some things that you might take into consideration if you really want to get to the nitty-gritty continuing with plants though you also want it to be non-toxic now this is not something that you can play with I mean there's no way around this like if it's toxic to your animal it's out of the it's out of the enclosure no question no doubt about it um, so this is something that you can't really play with um, at all just make sure it's not toxic um, and then you also want to consider the size so most of the times when we buy the little four dollar two dollar plants they're you know in planters that are like three inches and you got to consider like what an adult plant of that plant looks like and one of the things you could do is simply have this plant in your enclosure until it gets adult size and then you might want to switch it out for another small one or whatever the case may be but just consider how much space it's going to need in the long run if you really want that plant to continue to grow in your enclosure all right now my second roadblock is watering plants because one of the things that i actually just realized i was doing wrong after my like fifth freaking bioactive build i don't even know how many bioactive builds i've done at this point but I was definitely overwatering my plants like by a lot and I think if you saw my update video um, of my bioactive enclosure I think that's why all my plants died or at least a majority of them because I was just really overwatering my plants and it wasn't until I really got this fungus gnat issue that I started to realize like dude you're watering these plants too much and so now I've gotten to the point where um, at least with my house plants see I just saw a fungus gnat oh my god I was about to clap it <laughs> um, at least with my house plants I don't really water them until I see them slightly wilting um, especially with my stansevaria like my snake plant 
and things like that i know that those are like more of a desert type environment so they definitely don't need frequent waterings but they're also not going to indicate that they need water as some of my plants like my golden pothos would and so i know i'm saying a lot basically don't overwater your plants you really just have to look at the plant and try to dictate what it what it needs if you overwater a plant i actually have an example right here give me a minute okay so in this pot i am growing different varieties of pothos i believe this one is silver leaf or something like that this one that looks like that um i don't remember the exact variety and then of course i got my golden pothos and here i have different little spouts of it but if you notice this is a concrete planter and so it doesn't have a drainage hole so you have to be very careful if you're using something like this and this doesn't really apply to enclosures so i guess i'm getting off on a limb over here but anyway what i wanted to point out the reason why i got it out is because you see that little yellow leaf peeking in there that is um one of the indicators that you are overwatering your plants so if you see leaves turning yellow knock that water down a little bit now the next thing that i want to con that i want you to consider your next roadblock is the price girl they ain't nowhere around it these bioactive bills or oh boy sorry maybe i should stop being sexist on here <laughs> honey there ain't no way around it these bioactive bills are expensive and i mean like you can cut corners on some things but then it, it's never a bioactive bill is never going to be as cheap as a sterile tank would be you know what i mean because in a sterile tank you just have your substrate which could be newspaper for all you wanted it to be um you have your highs you have your water dish and you have your heat source that's it but with a bioactive bill you have your substrate you have your cleanup crew your heating element um more than likely you got plants because you want some type of plant matter in there to sustain your uh cleanup crew you probably had to go buy leaf litter or collect it and like we can go up the 10 fingers on how many things go into a bioactive bill so one of my recommendations is if you know you want to go bioactive start collecting certain things over a period of time don't try to go get it i mean if you can afford it then I'll buy by all means. Um, but I would recommend kind of getting a few things every now and again. Um, I did that myself. When I would go to an expo, I would pick up a couple things. Um, then the next time I went to an expo, pick up a couple more things and things like that. I prefer buying my things at expos. I find that they are a better price than a pet store. But of course, you could just go to a pet store as well. I mean, because when you go to an expo, you're considering admission costs as well. So maybe they end up being about equal. But anyway. However you like to get your supplies, I recommend staggering that. Um, and then also, one of the first things I would probably recommend you get off rip is probably your cleanup crew. That way you can go ahead and start breeding them and getting your cleanup crew to a larger population. Um, that way you're not having to constantly buy more isopods or springtails or whatever every time you want to do a different enclosure. I would just go ahead and... Um, breathe them yourself so anyway that's the price um and then the next thing the fourth robot block that you might want to consider is how you're going to keep the enclosure because one of the issues that i've ran into just personal experience with using a heat pad with a bioactive enclosure is first of all it's going to dry up the substrate a lot quicker and that's at least especially from the bottom that bottom heat so it's going to dry out from the bottom first and and that's kind of an issue because your springtails and your isopods or even if you're using the earthworms whatever you may use be using for your cleanup crew generally they need a certain moisture content in the soil and so it's constantly this battle with okay on this side of my enclosure where my heat pad is it's constantly drier than this other side but you know if they can migrate to the moisture side then it might not be that big of a deal but also with heat pads is that you cannot have any of your live plants too close to your heat pad because it essentially will fry the roots and i have did that to a plant uh, so you got to be very careful and strategic about where you put your heat pads on your bioactive setups um i've never used a heat bulb but um i guess right off the bat i can't foresee any issues if you go the heat bulb route it's just for somebody who loves heat pads you know i didn't want to have to switch to heat bulbs just because I went bioactive. And so that's kind of something I struggled with with my bioactive setups. If you saw my very last bioactive bill in my four foot enclosure, 
Um, you can see the way that I did the heat pad in that situation. I basically put the heat pad on an elevated shelf away from my substrate. That way I didn't have to worry about it being too close to plants or drying out the substrate. So that was a good uh, workaround. To, to still be able to keep my heat pad, especially with that thick plywood where I couldn't really put it under the enclosure. And then the last thing that I wanna discuss, and I want and I want to bring this up as a roadblock because it was actually, um, I was going back and forth with one of my commenters and she was like, well, what am I gonna do with my snake while I'm setting up bioactive? And I guess I had never considered that because I've always had like a spare tank around or something to that extent. But one of the things, um, I would well I would recommend two things. Well, we can go to we can go two different routes with this. Um, so, if you're using like if you're doing like the the spray foam background with silicone and things like that, if you're using any of those harmful chemicals, then you have to let that cure before you put your pet back in the enclosure. So you really can't do your bioactive building one night. It's just not going to happen because you're having to let these different things cure. So that means you have to have a temporary setup. I would recommend just going to the dollar store or going to your big, you know, your big box store and getting um, a plastic tub with a lid and just keeping your snake in there until the enclosure is ready. Um, if you are not using any of those silicones or spray foams, then you can really do your enclosure build overnight. Then really all you would need to do, like for my very, I'll give you an example. For my very first video, um, on my channel with my ball python um, when I was setting up her enclosure bioactively all I did was I let her hang out on my bed while I was putting everything in enclosure and I did all of that within a couple of hours now you're technically supposed to let your um, let your cleanup crew get acclimated let your plants get acclimated so you're supposed to technically let your tank cycle for I would say a minimum of a week but you know at least two three weeks or so um, but if you don't have time for it, then don't do it. I have only done the acclimation process once and I haven't really had any ill effects from not doing it. So if you don't have a temporary setup, then I would recommend foregoing those, the background stuff, and just sticking to the basics of just filling it up with your, your substrate, your cleanup crew, your plants, and things like that, and then go ahead and put your pet back in there um, after you get done setting everything up. So, um, that's it. I went through all of the roadblocks that I wanted to go through with you guys. Um, if you have any other roadblocks or things that you feel like people should consider before they go bioactive, then definitely leave a comment below and let's start that discussion. I would love to know what you guys think. Um, there are other things that I probably could have brought up, but maybe we'll bring it up in a future video. So make sure you subscribe for that and I will see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>